One, two, three, four. Adventure time! Come, Come on, on, grab your friends. We're going to a very distant land. With Jake the dog and Finn the human. And Marceline. The will never end. It's, it's adventure, adventure time. time. Woo! <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. You should have said, with Marceline and Finn, Finn the human. Yeah, Jake's, Jake's not, not here. here. <laughs> Forget that. I always say this, but I like any episode that's with Hunts and Avedere. Cause I thought you were going to say any episode that has Marceline, well, that which would have made sense. <laughs> but Hunts and Avedir, Marceline's dad, is played by my real-life father, Martin Olson. So it was really cool to, especially the uh, Fry episode, is we got to like battle to the death. And I was like, I'm going to kill you, dad. But I was like really talking to my dad, so it was kind of... Awkward, but really fun. <laughs> but you didn't actually want it. You guys have a good working relationship. Yeah, no, he's yeah. one of my best friends. So you guys, it's, it's they wrote weird. A, they wrote like a Adventure Time book together, actually, didn't you? Yeah, Jeremy. As a matter of fact. Hey, I'm good at segueing. <laughs> he's good at plugging. Um, yes, me and my dad are actually co-writing. If I don't know if any of you guys read the Adventure Time Encyclopedia. Show of hands. Who all read the Adventure Time Encyclopedia? Couple. Oh, no, no, no. There's more than that. They're just being too proud. Well, that book there was also written by Martin Olson, my father. And so we're doing the sequel to that book. And I got to co-write with him. So that'll and be really And this is the fun. first time you're announcing this, correct? Yes. This is the official announcement of the next Adventure Time book. Woo! So right you guys here are here in it So that's pretty freaking special, actually. Yeah. So. But it was a really awesome experience. Like, just... Being able to, I've always wanted to be a writer. My dad was a writer and I grew up idolizing him and being able to work with him sort of through my aspect of voice acting through the show and now I'm sort of flipping it and getting to do his aspect of writing is it's become a very special. And you're like, are, are you, are you, you're like writing it as Marceline, yeah? I'm writing it from the viewpoint of Marceline. That's so cool. it's first person, you know, her thoughts, her feelings, everything. It's, it's really special. It's like, yeah, that's sick. You, ask your question. Um, Olivia, I was wondering if you could do a love confession to Princess Bubblegum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it all depends on how you view that relationship. I, I, that's, your, that's the balls in your court right now, so. Oh, Bubblegum. Sweet, sweet Bubblegum. Ooh. You're my bestie, heart. That's not what she wanted. <laughs> I know that's not what she wanted. <laughs> it's, okay. Ooh. It's, it's good. Thank you. <laughs> she was like, oh. Taking a load off. Greetings. Whoa. Yeah. I was Greetings. not expecting that voice. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, I was expecting like normal voice yeah, and like Andre this. the Giant just <laughs> is at the um, mic. Does anybody agree that this guy needs to get into voice acting? <laughs> because gonna... that is a one of a kind I voice I think that was right his there. purpose. <laughs> was, Discovered right I here. I was going to ask you, um, when you, uh, do you have to have like your standard talent agent to go into voice acting? Or? Um, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, for us, obviously, we, we both do. Um, Every voice actor I've ever worked with and done panels with, we get this question a lot. And seriously, every single person has a different story of how they got into it. So I think anything is possible if you, especially with a voice like that, like you can probably have a really easy in. So make a reel, post it online, try to get an there's agent. Also, yeah, there's also like, I mean... You'd be surprised how Take much... Take a voiceover workshop, and that'll be a really good thing to just meet people that are in the same field. And there's just a lot of, like, local stuff. Like, even everything from, like, local, like, they do a lot of local casting for, like, radio commercials and stuff uh, that are regional to um, other stuff that is good. I mean, I think voice acting class or would be awesome, and people would be like, wow, uh, yeah. Your voice is there. I know. So. I have a question for you, actually. Could you okay. just please say... Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, see? Oh, baby, I like he that. He could be like the opening entry to any like R&B song <laughs> yeah. from the 90s, but <laughs> yeah. Barry White, dude. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. What made you guys decide to get into voiceover work and acting? Jeremy? Uh, the paycheck. Really? <laughs> no. No, uh, no, not at all. Uh, I started acting uh, when I was like five or six. 
Um, and so at that age, for me, uh, I, I lived in L.A., and I just, I loved just movies and TV shows and cartoons and everything just in general. So for me, as just a little kid, I was like, oh, I really, you know, that's something I really want to do. And so for me, I just, it was kind of a childhood dream, and uh, I was like, oh, I told my dad, I was like, I want to do acting. He's like, uh, okay. Uh, and then he, like, took us in, like, a, a talent agent in L.A. for, like, uh, for, like commercials, and he was kind of expecting them to be like, no, and, you know, just kind of put an end to that or whatever. And they sent us out. And my brother, like, went out on, like, one audition and booked something, which was, uh, we're thinking, like, wow, this is awesome. It must be, like, that easy, you know, all the time. And it was not it's that not. easy all that it's time, not. no. Uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of time. There's so many auditions that you go out for that, like, you don't get and stuff. But from there, uh, we just kept working our way up. And uh, my dad's been super supportive. Uh, and I started doing, like, live action little commercials, a couple little like radio spots in there, and then some like co-star guest spots on TV shows when I was younger. Um, I did stuff on like Lost, uh, ER, and just kind of worked my way up, and uh, here I am like 12 years later, uh, still working and uh, being able to be on an awesome show like Adventure Time is super cool. So for me, it was just kind of a childhood dream, something I've always loved doing. What about you, Olivia? It was a little bit similar. Um, I grew up also wanting to have I was like my dream was just to be a singer as a kid though like I've always been super musical she's awesome me and my dad do you want to sing for us maybe later <laughs> but my dad uh was working in the entertainment business as well and he wanted me to have no part in it whatsoever so me and my mom sort of went behind his back and got me an agent and I started Bummer. going out on auditions and Sort of like Jeremy, I did a, some on-screen acting as a kid. I started when I was eight, nine. But it's crazy because I never thought that voice acting was like a career. But growing up, now looking back on it, my dad was a writer for cartoons for many, many years. He was a head writer of Rocco's Modern Life, if anyone knows that show. Um, he worked on SpongeBob and like a bunch of crazy shows. But like it's crazy now to be to be a voice and doing it with my dad, it's, it's totally turned full circle because when I was eight and nine, we were like, okay, tell your dad you're going to dance class because you can't tell him you're going to this audition because he doesn't want you to do this. <laughs> but it sort of just fell into my lap and especially with him being so focused in the cartoon world, it sort of became a different outlet. Like, I didn't have to do on-screen acting. I didn't have to be so much in the spotlight. I could do something that's a little more reserved and behind the scenes. And that's really special about voice acting. So if you guys weren't doing voice acting, what do you think you guys would be doing? Anything extreme or crazy? <laughs> I think I would be doing the same stuff I'm doing now, but probably more. I'd be working on my music, probably as a full-time thing and trying to get that done. Cause that's always what I wanted to do is be a singer, but I've been so fortunate to be able to sing on shows like Adventure Time and Phineas and Ferb, so it's, it's a nice balance, but I would probably try to be doing that more. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, acting is such a huge, it's a huge part of my life, and it's been such a huge part of my life for so long. I literally... Like regular high school, maybe. I, yeah, I guess I would have gone to actual high school. That might have <laughs> been something. I remember when I was younger, I like enjoyed throwing around a football, but I don't think I could have actually played football because I'm like 5'8". So I don't think that would have happened. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I also do music uh, as well. I have, a, I have a band. Make Out Monday. Make Out Monday. Anybody Shameless plug. Heard the, heard the EP? It's pretty Go. good. I have, it on, I, have it, I have it on the table. So. Oh, yeah. Go buy his EP. But uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't really remember anything before I started acting because I started when I was like five or six, and so I don't remember a whole lot even before that point at all. So for me, it's just something that's such a big part of my life and it's just so natural and just know, kind of I think, there. I think both of us at, from a very young age sort of knew what we wanted to do with life. So we just like went in full force, made that our priority to make our dreams come true. And now we're here. I graduated high school like two years early uh, just for the sole uh, purpose of being able to focus more on, uh, on my career and on work. And so it's really just kind of it's what I do. It's kind, of, it's kind of my life, so. Awesome. All right, who has more questions? Don't be shy, guys. Come on down. Anything you can possibly think of, whether it's crazy. Whether it's really you want to hear us say something. weird, stupid sentences in our character voices. All right, we got one. Yeah, I was actually going to ask if you guys could do an improv conversation between your characters right now. 
really putting us on the spot. Give us a scenario at um, least. It has to be a clean scenario. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put that up. No, like, you know, 50 shades of pink stuff, you know, Adventure Time. That'd be bad. Um, no 50 shades of ooh going on here. No 50 shades of bubblegum. Um, well, what if both of your characters were up here in a convention? What would they like and what would they think about this? <laughs> I'm really young. She's giving you nothing. Just gotta go for it. Thank okay, you. well. Um, wow, there's so many people here that are dressing up as me. It's like they worship me or something. It's like Finn. they're trying to be Finn imposters. I don't like this. Finn, get over yourself. Honestly, nobody wants to be you. But there's only one protector of Ooh, and that's me, Finn the human. You're the protector of Ooh. I'm the queen. I'm the most powerful being on the planet. You're a vampire. You suck people's blood. I don't suck blood. I drink red. All right. That's pretty cool. So, um, <clears throat> you got any for me? No. But I, I bet you have... I don't like the way have, you're looking at me right now. I bet you have blood running through No, I veins. don't. Yes, I do. But it's like cold-hearted Superman blood. I don't know, you guys. Do you think I should drink Finn's no, no, blood? No, 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 no. Wow. I don't know what the frick just happened, but I don't know what happened, happened either. It that was happened. improv. That was pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. Who's next? What else we got? Any other improv <laughs> scenarios? What else you got? What no other more you improv get? because that was terrible. I just attacked Jeremy. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You're a minor. It's all right. It's nobody needs to know. I don't see any cops. It's I think we're fine. I won't file a harassment lawsuit, so we're okay. So, um, what are your favorite characters in Adventure Time, and why? I love uh, LSP. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm guessing you mean like besides our own characters, yeah. and <laughs> I think oh, it's hard. Uh, I love LSP. Jake, love LSP. I'm a huge Magic fan of Man. the Ice King. The Ice King who doesn't love the Ice King. <laughs> Gunter, what are you doing? He's pretty great. I love Gunter. I mean, I also love Cinnamon Bun. I mean, like Cinnamon Even Bun. He stole your woman. He's, no, he didn't steal. No, he didn't steal Flame Princess. He's like her bodyguard. He's not dating her. He definitely jacked her from you. That guy. I still like the character though. He's you know you're messing up when your girlfriend leaves you for a pastry. Story of my life. <laughs> Any other questions? Come on. You guys came to the panel and you don't want to ask us anything? There we go. There we go. That's what's up. We got a sailor. Hey. So um, I have a question Which for question? both of you guys. What's your favorite song from the show? Um, I, like the, I like the song, the, uh, like the dead, I don't know what it's called, the, like the dead food song where like Finn and Jake are doing like a country sad ballad about how all their favorite foods are dead. Can you go and just sing a little piece of it for all? It's like, my hot dog's dead. My cupcake's dead. <laughs> my hamburger's dead. I, I don't write the show. I couldn't tell you where it came from, but I like that song. Thank you. Uh, I have, there's so many good songs in Adventure Time. Um, I guess since you're probably going to ask me to sing one, I'll say my favorite Marceline song, which is... Uh, the Daddy's Little Monster song. Because that's like the only one I feel like is upbeat. She gets like flack all the time how they're like, Marceline, your songs. We did a convention together for uh, Ken Osborne as our director on the show and he made a comic about some of the banana guards. And so we had this like really like uh, awkward skit that we did. Like at radio Comic -Con. play thing, yeah. And they were like, Marceline, all of your songs are so emo. <laughs> the only one that's not. Then one time uh, we were doing like the Eat My Fries song live and Olivia's like, hey Jeremy, why don't you beatbox? It was a hot mess. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Because <laughs> I did it on the track. I was like, I can do that. I hadn't, I never like watched that since we recorded it, so I don't even remember what right, I did. Jeremy, they just want to listen to me okay. sing, so be quiet. <laughs> well, screw that story. Why don't you just go <laughs> sing, Olivia? I will. Gosh. I know you just want to give your little girl the world. But daddy, I'm not just your little girl. I got my own life. 
I got my own plan. I hope you understand and like the way that I am. Cause I want your respect and I want to be here. But I don't want to rule the night of sphere. Oh, yeah. That's Woo! really good. Sorry for cutting you off, Jeremy. I'm That's just okay. giving the people what they want. Do they want that? Well, oh, yeah, know. but... <laughs> No one needs to listen to you talk. Nope. This is the Marceline. We hear enough of this anyway. This is so. the Marceline panel with he's Finn featuring too. Finn. Featuring Finn. All right. How would you guys say that you? <laughs> I'll just make she up just... questions all day. All right. <laughs> Thank you, because otherwise we're going to be sitting up here like. Okay. No, I'm sure they'll think of more questions. Start thinking, guys. How would you guys say that you most relate to the characters that you play on Adventure Time? Well, I think she literally is Marceline in real life. <laughs> She looks just like her. She wears the same hat. She's a rocker chick. Um, I don't turn into a demon, though. That's probably a good thing. My boyfriend might say otherwise, but for the most part, I don't know. I think I relate to her. I have a pretty... If I found out you were a real-life vampire, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and I mean that in the best kind of way. I do um, stay up all the time. I do drink a lot of red. <laughs> and I don't know. I think the one thing that is different about us is my dad is actually a sweetheart <laughs> and not and not evil. So that's that's what I got on For my sure. side. But how do you relate to your character, Jeremy? Uh, he did get his arm chopped off like four different times, and it just grew true. back. So I haven't had that happen. I've never broken a bone in my body. I think Finn's probably broken every bone in his body. Uh, but similarities, uh, Finn sucks at math. I'm awful at math. <laughs> um, differences, Finn has many lady problems. I don't have time for women. I don't really? Have time no for that. women? Nope. Okay. I don't have time for that. So ladies, he is available. Technically, yes. Technically. <laughs> All right, we got some questions. Finally. Yeah. I What's feel, up? I feel sorry that it took me so long to come up with something. <laughs> That's I all right. Go over. Um, okay, so you get to work with a, a huge, huge uh, a voice actor that has been a huge part of like my childhood growing up, uh, John DiMaggio, and I wanted to know... For Shizzle? Uh, specifically with voice actors, I know most of the time you get to record completely separate from each other, and it's a very uh, uh, individual process. I'm guessing that was her to... question, too. Oh, oh, no. She goes... <laughs> 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 um, how, how is it working with them, and do you guys get a lot of time to kind of, you know, hang out and uh, go on crazy uh, real-life adventures? Well, uh, We do record we together. We do record together, yeah. Uh, so that's some really shows, fun. Some shows don't. Our show does, which is really awesome. So generally, for the most part, whoever's in the episode is going to be there recording. Um, I'm the youngest on the show, so I don't know if... You, I mean, we're, we're definitely... We all get along great, and we hang out. I'm we get, like, the Comic Cons and the stuff. Except for there's, like, Ren... Well, I met a really cute little Nino who was on the show who did, like... Did he... T I wait. think the voice of Mima was, like... Oh the, oh, the girl, Mimao, yeah, yeah, And then there's young Marceline, so you're technically not the youngest on the show. Technically, but no. But out of the main like cast, Like the regular, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we do get to record all together, which is really fun, because it's, it's crazy. It's almost like we're in a live-action version of the show, and some of the, like, battle scenes especially, or any, like, noises we have to do, we're full-on acting out in the booth, like... If, if it's a grunt, we're like, Kent, what is that grunt for? He's like, oh, you're swinging a punch. So we'll be like, Ugh! you know, like we look crazy when we do it. But if they set up like cameras in there, we would have the stupidest faces on when we're recording. <laughs> and then, yeah, on top of that, like people think, oh, voice acting, you're just probably sitting down and not moving at all and just kind of going, we throw our you know, entire hey, how's it going? But it. no, you, I mean, some people will sit, but you're kind of acting out the motions. And you can kind of hear that through a read. You can hear if somebody's just going, Huh. Or huh. you know, like you can feel the, the, the power behind the all the all the noises and stuff. And so Robert always says he's like, Why do you wear so much jewelry to the to the records? Because I'm constantly jingling yeah. and he's like, Take off your bracelets. I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't think I would be moving, but we're like, I sweat. You you move, you sweat, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a workout. It's better than like the We Fit workout. Yo. Okay. 
So I was wondering if I could like have a video of you guys saying hi to my friend Sasha. She couldn't come unfortunately and she's exploding on me he's like you have to get a picture of them. And I'm, I was thinking maybe one better would do saying hi to my friend. Sure. Yeah. Like what up Sasha and then both say one time or that? Yeah. Is it recording? What up, Sasha? One, two, three. What, what time is it? it? Sasha time. Woo. Boom. You. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're a really good friend. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I'm sure you guys spend, like, hours at a time, you know, doing, doing stuff in the vocal booth and stuff. What do you guys do to prevent, like, losing your voice? You know, do you warm up? Do you have... Do you take any remedies to make I'm sure you don't lose I'm an insane it? person when it comes to my voice. Like, I can't tell you the countless amount of times I've had to let, I am a vocal Nazi, that's what you just said. Like, of countless amount of times I've had to like let my friends down of, do you want to go to Six Flags? I'm like, absolutely not, I can't, I have a show coming up. Like, I'm a, I'm a purist when it comes to the belief of like, just don't talk. <laughs> not one, like for voice acting, it's not so bad, but being a singer, as, just for myself, I will not talk to anybody for like two days before I have a, a live show to do, just because I'm like, all I can do is sing my scales and drink tea, and just, it's like a huge thing to not eat any bad foods, like anything with dairy or alcohols or anything like that before you're gonna do a singing performance. I'm a vocal Nazi. Huh. But yeah. I think it's important, like, as far as voice acting goes, it's, at least for my character, it's not totally necessary because it's very close to my regular voice, but as far as singing goes, like, I think it's extremely important to take care of your voice and not, don't smoke, don't drink alcohol, none of that stuff. Yeah, no, I basically agree on every point. I don't know if I'm as vocal Nazi, I'm a vocal Nazi. as you are. I, uh, I mean, for me... Adventure Time doesn't really kill my voice that much. I mean, I have a lot of screaming in the show and stuff, obviously, but I'm kind of used to doing it. And it's, it's in, you know, short kind of bursts. It's not like I'm screaming constantly for four hours. I'll have, like, a few lines each episode where I'm screaming. But it's not that bad. Uh, for singing, usually... Says you. I turn into a demon, and I'm like... And then, of course, we have to sing after. I still scream. Well, yeah. I'm like, why? Which is, I hate it, but it's my job, so... But for singing, I have to take better care of my voice, so a lot of, like, uh, a lot of lemon ginger tea with, like, honey in, honey in it. My voice is cracked. <clears throat> like, honey in it and stuff. And what's up, camera? And, yeah, that's basically it. Just kind of take it easy. If I'm, you know, if I'm going to have, like, an actual band performance coming up or something, I probably won't and talk I a whole lot that Ricolas day. And I eat Ricolas like no other. Ricola! <laughs> Uh, but in the booth, it's not that bad during an episode for me, if, even if I have a lot of screaming in it. The, actually, the voice killer for me is when we do uh, Adventure Time video games. <laughs> Whenever we do video games as our characters, it's much worse because the video games, we're not recording all together. Action. So not only am I recording separate, so it's just me the entire time I'm there, but it's all action stuff. It's all attacks, dying and then noises. you have to do every option. Like, oh, let's yeah. say, if you, like, because the... The player is the person that's in control, so you have a noise for the punch, and then yep. you have a noise for super punch, and then you have a noise for duck. And, and it's... you have like three for each of those. So you yeah. have like big death, medium death, little death, <laughs> or like, you know, small attack, medium what, attack, what, what big attack. What would the differences be in big death, little death, small death? We have to just come up with it, which yeah. is really hard, because we're so like, I guess like, what's the difference between medium big and medium? We have to figure it out on figure it out on the spot. So like a you know, small punch is like huh. Medium punch is like huh. Big punch is like huh. You know, <laughs> doing that, you know, like two hours straight of just that and like even all the dialogue lines are like it's a video game, so they're very to the point. And they're very like, Oh, we gotta go attack that castle you know, it's everything is yelled. So the vo the, the video game records are like voice killers. Thanks guys. Oh, yeah. I answered way more than you wanted, but... Sometimes we ramble, so please just say, okay, I get it, and, like, we'll stop. I promise. Hi. Um, if you guys weren't the characters that you are in Adventure Time, who would you be? Hmm. Um, I would like to be Nikki Yang, who does BMO and Lady Rainicorn, because she's so cute. Like, her voice is just so, like... Bimo. Timid and small, but also she can speak fluent Korean, so that would be cool. But <laughs> Finn, put it in my butt. <laughs> it's an actual BMO line that wasn't inappropriate. <laughs> uh, I, 
I don't know. I, I mean, the Ice King's my favorite character, but Tom does such a great job. What an Ice, Ice King impression? Yeah. I was thinking about having a little wine and cheese party. Could be nice. Could be nice. I guess that, or even uh, Gunter, because all I'd have to ever say was wank. Tom Just Kenny my... is such a voice acting genius. If he is having a dialogue between Gunter and Ice King, he does it right on the spot, and he'll go back and forth like, well, Gunter, wank, you know, I got to get the princess, wank. Like, it's <laughs> insane. Like, he's so talented. He's so talented. good at just he's switching so in talented. and out of different voices yeah. and having conversations with himself. <laughs> I mean, it's it might be... It's a little be... schizophrenic, yeah. but it's... Really interesting. It's a great way for him to kind of exercise his schizophrenia in a healthy, healthy environment. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, So I was wondering, since my original question was asked about the voice actors um, getting together, do you guys have to? Do you guys have long recording sessions? Uh, Not super long. No, I mean. When the show first started, they were much longer because you're getting the groove of the show and, you know, the scripts are longer. It's, we got them before they were cut down. But now, uh, usually an episode records takes like two and a half hours. our time slot is two to six, but we usually get out of there by like 4.30, 4.45 on a good day. <laughs> but sometimes there's, sometimes we have to do pickup lines and... Or ADRs or, you know, any, any of that stuff will make it go a little bit longer. But usually we're not even there three hours. It's like, you know... Two hours and forty-five minutes, three hours. But I think you're right. It's it's progressed as the seasons go on. Because in the beginning, we were sort of feeling out the characters, seeing what's what what works and what doesn't work. In the beginning, a couple times we didn't even get a whole episode done in the full four hours we were allotted. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was like that's that's just with any show. And then we were still show. in that awkward time of they might recast us too. Yeah, if they, I didn't, a, if they didn't like what we were bringing to the table. So. That was a scary time. It Literally, was a scary time. Show first started out, and besides you, uh, the other whole main cast is not what they actually ended up being. So it's like it was like me and three other people for Prince of Bubblegum, Ice King, and Jake. Mm-hmm. And, like, systematically every week somebody else would get, like, cut. And I was like, well, frick, I guess I'm next. <laughs> and, and they never they did. Ended up, they ended up coming back to do, like, many other voices on oh, the yeah, show. All, so. all three of them, so. But it was scary. It was a scary time. <laughs> Actually, originally, the guy that originally played Jake, uh, Steve Little, plays Peppermint Butler on the show. Yeah. And the girl that originally played Prince of Bubblegum plays Susan Strong, which is funny. Yeah. Cool. Fun fact. Yes. <laughs> you heard it here first. Well, for Adventure Time, um, how do you, like, figure out how to do all the voices? Like, how do you figure, like, I don't know how to say it another way, but um, how do you figure out, like... How do we, like, come up with the the voices? Yes. Um, Well, for me, it was not easy, but uh, originally, in the original pilot, my older brother, Zach, actually did the voice of uh, Finn or Penn, which is what he was called in the pilot, uh, three years before Cartoon Hour picked it up. And then uh, it was originally supposed to be a short for like Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon didn't pick it up. Cartoon Network picked it up three years later and they just opened it up for auditions and just kind of assumed that his voice had changed or, or whatever. Uh, and then I auditioned and my voice sounded a ton like his did at the time when he did it. And I kind of tweaked it a little bit more. So around the same age, right? Yeah, because he was 12 when he did it. And then when it got picked up three years later, I was 12. And my voice sounded really similar, and I kind of tweaked it and copied his a little bit. So I kind of had, like, a template for what Finn was. Yeah, I have that great picture on my phone of the first record oh gosh, we ever yeah. did. I have, like, shaggy hair. I'm, like, <laughs> super short. Little, little chubby face. Uh, but for me, that's kind of how it was. I mean, it's definitely grown since then. I remember the first season, all I ever did was... The first season was, like, all yells... And, like, that's it. There was, like, not a whole lot of range. And then was, your voice started changing. And he, was, yeah. he would get super embarrassed because he was going yeah. through puberty. But then they were like, that's great. Let's yeah. keep it. And now they want him to do these fake, like... Voice cracks. Yeah. <laughs> the yells in the first season were all completely accidental. It was just because I was going through puberty. They're like, that's awesome. That sounds great on him. Like, just keep doing that. And so You're now like, I just I do can't. it anyway. I'm old now. <laughs> Um, As far as me, I had a a very interesting way of being cast on the show. Um, Penn, the creator, Pendleton Ward, love him. He is actually a good friend of my father's, and he was a writer for Phineas and Ferb, which was a show I was already working on, and he contacted him saying, oh, who does the voice of Vanessa? I want her to possibly come in and do a voice on the show. I really like, you know, her sort of, like, angsty teenager thing, which I was at the time. My dad's like, 
uh, you're joking, right? That's my daughter. Like, what do you mean? Do I know her? <laughs> so, so that sort of happened. And I kind of just went with the similar voice as to what I was doing. And it's kind of similar to just my regular speaking voice. But as far as demon Marceline, I can't even tell you. I just try to like shake off any insecurities I have or shame or embarrassment because I have to get so weird when I do that. But that's also how my dad ended up being cast as Hunts and Abadir because it was just so weird how the whole casting thing happened. But it's hard. Turning into a demon is not fun. And we have demon Marceline, bat Marceline, wolf Marceline, octopus Marceline. Like, have you had a lumpy Marceline yet? No, she didn't turn lumpy. Okay, that's like she the did only not thing. go to lumpy, okay. and I don't even know what I would do for that too. But it's all I'm a it's all trial and error, really. It's like yeah. you just do what do it until they're like, oh, we like that. A lot of times, your first kind of inclination for something usually ends up being the one they go with because it's the most natural and like the first off the top of your head. So usually, that ends up being the best thing. Thank you for your question. I like it. Usually Finn gets into a lot of lady trouble, so if you He's changing her... his shirt right in the middle of the room. What? I caught you. He thought no one was watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. Oh, as I was saying, he gets into a lot of lady trouble, so if you can give him any type of advice, what would you give him? If I'm giving who any type of advice? Finn, like advice Finn. on ladies. If, if I could give Finn advice on ladies? Yeah. That's assuming that I know how to handle ladies myself, which I don't. <laughs> so, Finn, you're in the same boat as me, homie. What would you say to him, though? Uh, I have no clue. Uh, I'll give advice. What's your be advice? Be yourself. Just be yourself. And the right, the... <laughs> the right lady friend will be, be the right one for you. If you're yourself and they still like you, then that's how you know you have a keeper. There you go. This is why guys can't understand girls and vice versa. We're just so simplistic and girls are so amazingly complex. All right, I was wondering, can we look forward to more of the ooh backstory, post-apocalyptic kind of essence that the show has been giving off for a while, like in the episodes Finn the Human, Jake the Dog? Can we look forward to that in the later episodes? Yeah, actually, one episode coming up is that it actually literally shows the entirety of the uh, whole thermal nuclear war that is like the pre-adventure time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, you thought I was serious, though. I seem serious in that. We actually, to be 100% honest, have no idea, just like you guys, about upcoming episodes until we actually go in and record them. We basically then... learn at the same time that you do, except the fact that we just record nine months earlier, but... But... Shamelessly plugging here, if you guys get the new Adventure Time book, which comes out in July, <laughs> there is loads and loads and loads of, of post-Mushroom War substance. It's like, there's so much, and it's all coming from Marceline's, you know, personal thoughts and feelings about what's going on around her, from being a little kid to old, and, and there's going to be a lot of uh, spoilers in there for the upcoming seasons. Hey, I'm about to maybe spoil something. That's why I'm about to ask this. What episode, what, like, where are you guys at watching-wise? Because this might not have aired yet. Yeah, what was the last, was episode, the last episode that episode? came out? A weird bongo, dude. Okay, has there been one with Finn's dad recently? No? Okay, cool. Way good, to go, Jeremy. Good thing I didn't... <laughs> well, that's not a big... They knew that was coming back. But the, thing, the main thing I was trying not to spoil, I haven't spoiled yet, but you'll be learning a little bit about uh, uh, Finn's birth. A little bit. A little bit. I'm not going to say more than that, but that's coming up. All right. All right. That's where coming he, up. Where he got the, the Finn baby song from? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. All right. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I just want to say the writing on the show is amazing. You guys fit more in 10 minutes than most shows fit in the whole 22. But my question is, root beer guy, are you going to bring him back full time? He died. I know. You got to bring him back, please. He he's, a... he's, he's dead. Okay. It might be technically a kid's show, but there are real stakes. Okay. Root beer guy is no more. 
No. You never know, though. They do a lot of flashbacks and stuff, so That's maybe true. you'll get a little peek into his past. Who knows? Like we said, we know nothing. So, yeah. This is, you guys might as it's well just go home now. It's funny you mentioned that, though, because the last record I was at, there was, uh, they were going to put in some mention of Root Beer Guy, but then they decided not to because they're like, oh, yeah, we don't want to remind the audience that he's dead because <laughs> that's kind of depressing. Well, thank you. Yeah. So uh, Ted likes Adventure Time, apparently. And Winnie the Pooh. It's Jake the Bear. It's Winnie the Pooh? Well, he's dressed as Winnie the Pooh. But oh, I thought I was like, time. that's Ted from the yeah. movie Ted. He, he loves playing imaginary friend characters. And <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, my question is for you, Mr. Shada. Okay, right, Mr. Talk. Finn. <laughs> uh, my it concerns your role in Team America World Police. Uh, recently, obviously, the North Koreans allegedly hacked Sony Pictures. Oh, and, uh, you know they... Team America? You know that? No. Go, go and, you. <laughs> and uh, threat, you know, made threats against them if they released the interview. Which yes. Caused, and, uh, oh, by the way, as a result of that... Yeah. Team America World Police DVD sold out on Amazon.com for the few people. Who anyway, my question is, are you sort of fearful now about uh, ever going anywhere near that part of the world to Japan or South Korea? Because they, they've kidnapped people before, you know, at, uh, the North Koreans have. And you know what's funny is actually my sister is Chinese. Uh, my sister is actually, we adopted her from China. So I, I myself, okay. I've actually never been there, but my parents... No, I didn't. When, well, I was really little when she was adopted. But I so my parents you guys went. went uh, your dad was telling me. They did. Oh. I didn't go. Uh, I, no, I don't yeah, really have any. I mean, as long as you're not doing anything stupid, you know, and you're being careful, I, I'm not going to speak in the political side of things because I, I don't know any of that. But yeah, I was in Team America. Did you ever make, they you never got threatened from the North Korean regime for being in that film or any of the other voice cast back Not then? that I know of. I mean, technically... I'd like to think that Kim Jong-un has better things to do. Probably. I would hope. America. I would hope. I hope he does. But I guess he doesn't have better things to do. I was do just a little like... French boy in the beginning that was singing Farrah Jaca. That's all I did. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything wrong. I warned my mom in the movie that terrorists were about to blow up the city. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I didn't offend them. The movie might have, but oh well. Too bad. All right, any other questions? We have time for a couple more. Come on down. Hi, Marceline. So, really specific, you're the vampire queen, right? Yes. No, she's not. <laughs> then who's vampire king? Ooh, that's oh, a really good question. Wait, wouldn't that, wouldn't that just be your alternate universe self? Well, Marceline. Uh, yeah, Marceline could be. But, um, yeah, Marceline the vampire king. Duh. But in reality, there might be some talk about it. But I, I'm not sure exactly what. Marceline and Marceline might meet each other. Maybe the Vampire King was a real person. Who knows? I don't know. Like I said, we don't know. <laughs> that was such a Cartoon Network talking points answer. <laughs> I just want to point that out. I'm so sorry for, like, walking completely around no, that that question. was awesome. That was, like, skillfully walking around that question. That was great. I've had a lot of practice with this. What's up? Hey. So, hey. how's it going? <laughs> Go for it. I'm sorry. Let's ask your question. All right. So, earlier on, they were talking about the booths. Uh, ca uh, Talk about record. what? Booths. Like, recording booths. Oh, oh the booths. booths. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, they were talking about how it's small. Like, how do you guys feel when you go into the booth? How do we feel when we go into the booth? I mean, they were saying, like, it smells and stuff. It's not, it it's smells? Not it doesn't smell. I mean, if someone farts in there, you're going to know it real quick. Yeah, but that's what they were talking about. Besides that, I don't think it really smells. It's cold. A little cold. It is cold in there. A little there. chilly in there. It's like a meat locker. Um, as far as how we feel, I don't know. How do you feel when you go to work? It's sort of the same thing, except our job is awesome. I go to school. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in reality, like, it, when I go to, like, that's sort of my mentality. It's like, I'm going to work today, yeah. you know? But we love our job, so it's not like, oh, frick, I'm going to work today. <laughs> I get really excited just to be able to, you know, know more about my character. I think I get just as excited as the fans of the show do, because I'm learning 
at the same rate that you guys are learning about backstory and and relationships and stuff like that. I think it's it's always a nice surprise when we get there and we get to read over our script and we're like, oh hey, I got stoked when I did the episode of like Marceline and Lumpy Space Princess, like doing a doing this like yeah the Princess Day episode. I, I was stoked because Lumpy Space Princess is my favorite it's episode like the ever. The Hangover. Adventure Time Edition, because you kidnap <laughs> yeah. her and put her in the back of the car. It was it was fun, or it was like Thelma and Louise, you know, like <laughs> driving off in the sunset. But I get I get excited just to know what the the next line in the story is going to be. All right, thank you. Yes. Um, what's your favorite line, and could you do it for us? <clears throat> yes, I can. Okay, this is my favorite line. I don't remember the context of the line, but all I know is that Finn is saying this to Jake. And he says, I want you. <laughs> if you can find that episode, please let me know what it's called. Because I just remember having to record that, and it made me really happy. Uh, calm down, weenies. I like that. Cause it says weenies. Just because it says weenies. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, sorry. So... My question is, is there something that you guys want to see happen in your universe or the alternate Fiona and Cake universe? Ooh. I just want Finn to get a lady. Oh. Get a lady, 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 lady. Am I supposed lady, to censor that? Lady, <laughs> lady, 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 lady. Okay. Get, get your mind, lady. Get your mind out of the gutter, gosh. I just want Finn to have a relationship. Jeez. Yeah, a, you know, pro appropriate relationship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I think I would really like to know about Marceline's mom. Um, she sort of has, like, two surrogate fathers, but not really ever talks about her mom. Or in the alternate universe have, you know, who hunts an abadir would be, as a woman, would be really cool. This, like, devilish lady person who sucks souls, I think would be awesome. But I'd like to know, I mean, I'm always, like I said, I'm always stoked to just, like, find out more about my character because I feel like the more information I get, the easier it is to play her. Yeah. I feel. I want to know what Finn's mom is like. Yeah. That'll be teased a little bit coming up, too. But the more info, the, the more awesome. And Finn just... He's had so many lady issues and gone through so many relationships, and every He's been time married like four times. Technically, he has, which is really he's weird. Thirteen. Yeah, I don't know. That's no, he's not thirteen. Well, he's still not legal, but he, I think he's like fifteen now, sixteen in the show. Really? Yeah. Oh. They oh. The, uh, a little while back they made a mention of his age, and some I think they said like fifteen. It's hard for me to remember because Marceline just she never changes. Like I don't think she doesn't celebrate birthdays. It's kind of weird how Finn's like the only character on the show that ages, and somehow nobody else does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. Well, she ages, but she's a vampire, so she stays the same. Yeah. But I don't think she's celebrating birthdays because she's like, this again? No. Hey, girl. <laughs> Hi. Um. So you might hate me for this, but I was really wondering if you remembered how to sing the foot song and if you would do it. Is that a question for me? Yeah, if you would sing the. Foot uh, song. Let me see <laughs> if I. I'm guessing I, that means I don't remember. The, let me remember the foot song. Uh, how does it start? You don't know? It's just my favorite song, but I don't actually know. Oh, um, <laughs> Does anybody know song? it? You don't know. Does anybody know the foot song? Anybody know how the foot song starts? I uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on the foot song. <laughs> I can sing the balloon music song a little bit. Shake your extremity. That one. I remember a little bit of that one. It's not your favorite song, though. It's I'm sorry. <laughs> it could be her new favorite song, and you can do it anyway. Foot song. <laughs> Something about, like, you know get up somebody or I'll kick you up, something like that, I think. Yeah, I'm vaguely... This is like a season one episode, so this is like five years ago. Sorry. It's okay. No. You stumped me. He's sorry. You don't need to be sorry. Aren't you... Say you're sorry. I'm sorry. Do you yeah. remember the Punch of your Bun song? Yeah, he just did I just it. Did it. <laughs> I can do it again. Do it again. Okay. I'm a tough talking baby, I can dance like a man. I can shake him off, baby, I can shake him, I can. Punch all your bones, I can punch all your bones. If you're an evil witch, I would punch you for fun. 
Thank you. It was just I as like, good the second time. I'm liking just the. As good. It's yeah. I'm liking the impromptu. I felt it was only fair because I put you on the spot to beatbox behind me that one time, and it was just. It, well, it, it didn't go awful. It just started off a little awful because the tempo that I did was way too fast. Do you want to beatbox for us? Can we hear it? Should we do? Should we try to we try redeem to ourselves? That? Go a little slower this time. Okay. Uh, I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> Daddy, why did you eat my fries? I bought them, and they were mine. But you ate them. Spidey's rocking out. Yeah, you ate my fries, and I cried. <laughs> But you didn't Spidey. see me cry. Daddy, do you even love me? Well, I wish you'd show it, because I didn't know it. What kind of daddy eats his daughter's fries and doesn't even look her in the eyes? Daddy, there were tears there. If you saw them, would you even care? Wow. <laughs> that was better than last time. It was a lot time. better than last time, yeah. yeah. That I even added amazing. in Spidey a little bit there. And You're we welcome, Spidey. And sang it in front of you. like 10 times more people. Too. San Diego, so that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I think you two should put out an album. I like that. Beatboxing, not too bad. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. pretty hot. It's pretty hot. It's pretty good, pretty good. All right, we have time for another question or two. So any takers before we wrap this thing up? I, I know you question. guys have some questions. I have a question for him. No, Heather. oh my goodness, no! <laughs> Don't turn this on me now. So what's uh, so you so who? What's your favorite celebrity guest in the show? You like Lou Ferrigno? Yeah, I did like. I, I mean, I like Lou Ferrigno, yeah. but I like him as the Hulk. What about you guys? Who's your favorite well, what celebrity guest? What is? What did he play on Adventure Time? What was his character on Adventure Time? All right, now, oh my goodness, who are your favorite celebrities <laughs> on the show? This isn't gonna happen. This isn't gonna happen. I was excited to know that Andy Milanakis did a voice. That was cool. He's Neptune. Yeah, he. I am Neptar. I love Neptar too. The never ending pie throwing robot. robot. Yeah. Yep. Creator. <laughs> Creator. Uh, I like, there's a lot of people. Mark Hamill, freaking Luke Skywalker's been on the show. That's pretty awesome. I don't know why you guys aren't excited about that because I was. There we go. Uh, Rain, you ever, seen, like, you ever seen The Office? Rain Wilson plays Dwight on The Office. He's on the show. He plays Rattle Balls. Rattle Balls. Neil Patrick Harris is Prince yeah. Gumball. It's pretty legit. He did a great Prince Gumball. Um, gosh, yeah, Lou Ferrigno. Um, there's been so many. Uh, Andy Samberg, is Party Pat. Love Party Pat. Party Pat. A lot, of, a lot of good people. They're all, they're all great. Well, any final questions for Olivia or Jeremy? What? Okay, looks like we have one. Go for it. Come on down. I apologize, but my mother, she didn't exactly record me speaking to you. So, <laughs> huh? yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, my mother didn't record me speaking to you. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm very disappointed. But I finally built up the courage to come out here and try to uh, do, not the exact same thing, but something similar. <laughs> He's like, Mom, Mom, go. Turn on the camera. Hi, on. Mom. Turn it on. Hi. <sighs> Okay, so, um, oh, I was, this is actually a good question, though. Um, you know, I do a lot of voices as well, and, um, you know, when I, I try to do my, you know, you know higher voices and uh, lower voices sometimes. Um, I would love to hear you try and do a high voice, because oh, I'm not... Now you're just smooth. Okay. You're just like, hey, baby, I'm smooth talking. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing all right, brother. <laughs> So I'll speak like this for the rest of the conversation. Um, the frick? Not bad. Okay, okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Call up the agents. This guy's... I feel like you're <laughs> screwing with us. I feel like that's your normal voice and the yeah, other is put on. Everybody says that. I don't understand. They don't want to believe. They're not believers, you know? Boy, you I just thought went you were going to do the rest of it in like, their high voice. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, they're not believers. They don't understand me. Believers? But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh my so, gosh. So, like, when you, when you, like, you know, switch to these different, like, characters and whatnot, when you go from high to low, does that, does that hurt your voice? And if so, how do you, like, <laughs> how do you, like, you know, compress that, suppress uh, that? No, it doesn't. I mean, if you're doing it right, I don't know if there's a way to do it wrong, but it doesn't really hurt your voice. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I've never really had a problem with going, I mean, I guess, I think the one that would hurt my voice the most if I'm doing a super, super high-pitched character too much because that's almost equivalent to like yelling a lot. Like, even doing a low voice, like, hey, baby, how you doing? 
Right there. That's my cousin, fool. That's, that's not going to hurt my voice, but if I have to constantly do like, oh my gosh, how are you doing today? This is so great. Like, after a while, that's going to start hurting your voice a little bit, but I mean, not really. I have, if you're interested, I have a good vocal exercise for that exact thing. Okay. If you want to hear it, if anyone's sensitive to hearing, I suggest you leave. Um, but it's it's something Should to... I, I'm closest to you. Should yeah, I? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But it's something to uh, connect your registers so that it makes it easier to go from high to low. If you're doing, if you're singing and or doing high and low voices, so you go up or down, you go... Do that, and it'll help you. It's honestly a really good voice exercise to do for. You know what you used to remind me of? Making your voice not strain. You remind me of like that, really good. like the little hammer thing at the like theme parks that have the little ringer that goes up, like the boop. That's what it's yeah, like. but no, seriously, if you want to learn how to be able to do a high register for a long time or a low register or go back and forth like you were just doing towards us, that's a really good vocal exercise. So practice it. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're very welcome, good sir. All right. Here's our final question. This better freaking go. be good. This is the last one. Finn has done a lot of maturing throughout the seasons. Do you think he will finally end up with bubblegum by the end of it? Because I feel like they're just meant to be together. It's got to be destiny or something. Um, Not if I have anything to do with it. Ooh. Ooh. What? <laughs> you didn't hear that. Nobody heard that. <laughs> Nobody heard that. <clears throat> uh, I don't think Finn needs to be tied down by one lady. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, why not multiple? He's... There's a this lot of kingdoms freaking, out this there. This is a land with stretchy talking dogs there and rainicorns and... tons of beautiful princesses. There's too. a lot of them. There's a lot of them. I don't think he needs to make a decision yet. Too many princesses, too little time. Right there. Yeah, there's plenty of kingdoms out there. You never know. Yep. <laughs> too many princesses, too little time. <laughs> right. All right, I think we did have one more question because you came up. Do you have a Come question? On, one. All right, this is the last one. Yes, um, you being Finn and you being Marceline, what's it like working with Jake? <laughs> well, <laughs> why did, why was it Jake? <laughs> what's it like working with Jake? She's like, I don't think he's a real person. Um, I mean, like I was saying before, John DiMaggio and a lot of the older voice actors that work on the show are so talented. And I've honestly learned so much from being around somebody like John DiMaggio. He's, Likewise. He's larger than life. He is so funny. And I mean, I've learned a lot from him because he's so, like... They're so talented at what they do, and they've turned something like voice acting where I go in and it's very similar to my voice to someone like Tom Kenny and John who can do anything that they're given. Like they are, it blows my mind that they have crafted their vocal cords to be able to do it. They're, they're awesome guys. We get along with them great. I think for us, especially for me, like when I started, we were both a lot younger when we started, but I was like 12, so for me it was just kind of like having the best vocal voiceover teachers in the business there week in and week out for the past five years so it's been great and i honestly think that they've helped us become what we are today as voice actors yeah, like i was saying before i've never thought that this would be a career path for me but it's happening and i have so many other people to be responsible for my own success amen so yeah all right like, once again